Hi, it's Bimmerzen with another video and uh, this is a detailed guide on how to correctly remove and reinstall the Valvetronic assembly on the BMW's N42 or N46 engine. This is a very common procedure when you are changing the valve stem seals to fix that uh, oil consumption. So by the way, I have a video on that and I even made a special 3D printed tool to make that job faster and easier. Or when you are doing hydraulic lifters or uh, checking or replacing the rocker arms. There are also two O-rings on the spark plug cylinders that you can't get to any other way unless you remove the Valvetronic assembly. As you can see, they are sandwiched between the cylinder head and the Valvetronic bracket. So uh, there really is no other way to get to those o-rings and if those o-rings are bad they will start leaking oil into the spark plug well and that will in time foul the spark plugs and the ignition coils so uh, this is a real pain in the ass job so this is a perfect time to replace them while the valvetronic assembly is off and of course you will also have to remove the assembly anytime you are doing any serious work on it like replacing the eccentric shaft if it is worn uh, replacing or checking the intermediate levers those are those components right here or uh, when you are replacing the roller bearings on the eccentric shaft sometimes they get gunked up and then the DC servo motor for the Valtronic is unable to rotate the eccentric shaft and that causes all sorts of issues and sometimes also the retainer springs break so those are the springs here on the side that push the intermediate levers against the camshaft and the eccentric shaft again you will have to remove the valtronic assembly to get to those it's very important to get this procedure right before you do the timing otherwise you will have all sorts of issues uh, like rattle or uh, low power, maybe your intermediate lever slipped out of position and the uh, retainer spring is then pressing against the camshaft instead of the intermediate lever. So uh, that's also very common. Another common issue would be if the rocker arm slips out of position when you're reassembling this and this will again uh, cause all sorts of issues. Another issue is if the camshafts are not aligned correctly when you're doing the timing. So we're going to go through that also and make sure that you do it correctly. So in this video, we're going to go through this procedure step by step and I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on uh, how to do it securely and uh, fast as it can be done. I'm also going to talk about some common mistakes people make when they're doing this job. So with that said, let's get into the video. As you can obviously see, the valve cover is already removed. Now, if you need to see how to do that, I have different videos. So I'm going to link them down below and up in the card. So if you need to get uh, to this stage, you can just watch my other videos and uh, you should be good to go. Now, it is a bit different procedure depending on the chassis, but uh, it's not that complicated. So first thing we have to check that the Venus units are locked. The Venus units have a locking mechanism that uh, locks the rotor part and the stator part in initial position. So the stator part is basically just the sprocket that is driven by the chain and this is the rotor part that connects to the camshaft and the Venus units basically just adjust the timing of the camshafts. The locking mechanism consists of a spring and a locking pin that drops into the rotor. So when there is no oil pressure, this little spring will push the pin into the hole on the rotor and that will lock it together. So sometimes it could happen that the Venus unit is not locked when the engine stops. So it's a very good idea to make sure that the Venus units are locked before we do anything. 
when the oil pressure is applied, the locking pin lifts and it unlocks the Venos unit and then it can uh, adjust the timing. If you want to know more about the Venos units, I have a video, I'm going to link it down below. So uh, you can check it out, you can see how to disassemble a Venos unit and how it functions. A simple way to check if the Venos unit is locked is to just uh, use a 16 millimeter spanner and uh, apply some torque on the Venos bolt. So if the unit is locked, you should not get more than a degree of rotation when you apply some torque. So I hope that I can show you that. So you can see that it only rotates a little bit and then it stops. So this Venos unit is locked. Now let's check the other Venos unit. Again, the same story here. You can see that I can only rotate it a little bit, but uh, if your Venus unit rotates more than a couple of degrees, what you have to do is you have to rotate the bolt counterclockwise all the way, and then the Venus unit should lock. If it doesn't happen, then you have an issue with the Venus unit and it could be defective and uh, you might need to replace that. On the exhaust side, you have to apply the clockwise uh, direction of the torque to get it to lock. And uh, the same applies. If you cannot get it to lock, then there's an issue. Now we have to put the engine in top dead center on the first cylinder. And to do that, we're going to need the timing kit for the N42 and N46 engines. By the way, both engines are identical. They have the same design of the cylinder head. So this procedure should work on both engines. And here you can see you have the front uh, Vanos locking tool. And then you have the pre-tensioning tool for the chain tensioner when you're doing the timing. Uh, this is the locking pin that has to be inserted through the flywheel. This is a real pain in the you know what. And here are the camshaft locking tools. This one is for the exhaust and this one is for the intake. This is the smaller timing kit that costs about 50 euros plus shipping. And if you want to get the larger kit that includes also the tools for securing the valve tronic uh, intermediate levers and the uh, intake camshaft onto the Valtronic assembly, then you should definitely uh, buy that. It's a bit more expensive, uh, but uh, today I'm going to show you how to do it without that uh, large toolkit. So we're going to use zip ties, more about that later. So anytime you remove the Venos bolts and put the engine out of timing, you should always start with the engine in top dead center position. That way you will uh, avoid all sorts of issues down the line when uh, you are putting things back together. So this is a very good starting point. That's why we have to do it right now. So we will have to rotate the crankshaft of the engine to get it to uh, top dead center position on the first cylinder. So first we are going to see the current state of the engine. As you can see on the camshafts, you have a couple of uh, flats on the end and those flats have to be perpendicular to the cylinder head and that's when we will be able to insert the locking tools. So let me get the intake locking tool right now. I'm going to insert it here. And as you can see, we still have a way to go. Now I'm going to use a ratchet and a 22 millimeter socket to rotate the crank. Don't forget to put the transmission into neutral. Even if you have an automatic, don't leave it in park, put it in N or neutral always go clockwise, that is the running direction of the engine. And here we have to observe what's happening at the back. 
you can see that the camshaft is slowly rotating into position. So we're almost there. Let's see. Okay, so the tool has to be flush with the cylinder head, which is not at the moment. Okay. A bit more. Okay, so this is pretty good. Don't forget to remove the wrench afterwards. If the eccentric shaft prevents you from inserting the intake locking tool because uh, it is rotated in a way where it just kind of rubs against the locking tool, you can always rotate the eccentric shaft by rotating the worm gear on the Valvetronic servo motor. You can do this by hand and uh, if you rotate it enough, you should be able to insert that uh, locking tool. Now let's uh, check the exhaust side. And the exhaust side is flush with the cylinder head, so this looks fine. Make sure that the rounded part on the camshaft is pointing towards the top. If you do it the other way around, you will have all sorts of issues down the line. And the same goes on the exhaust side. And you can also see that this cutout here aligns with the cylinder head bolt down below. So this is the correct orientation for the exhaust camshaft. Now use the provided bolts to secure them to the cylinder head. Before you remove the vanos bolts, we have to undo the chain tensioner to release the tension on the chain. The chain tensioner is uh, right here on the side of the engine. You can see it right here. And uh, you have to use a 27 millimeter wrench to get it loose. Once you get it loose enough with the wrench, you can uh, unscrew the rest of the way by hand. Put an absorbent rag underneath because there will be a lot of oil flowing from that hole. Of course, your old underwear is the best uh, thing here. Never throw away old underwear. Now you're going to have to use 16 millimeter socket and some extensions to loosen the bolts. They are quite uh, tight. Now release the vanos units from the camshafts. And now you should be able to take them out. Here is the intake side. If you look here, you should see that there's a marking. So ein or in, this is the intake side and this will be the exhaust side. Never mix them up because they have different construction and uh, the engine will not work if you switch them around. Now you can remove the camshaft locking tools. Now we have to secure the intermediate levers and the intake camshaft to the Valvetronic assembly. The Valvetronic assembly can only be removed as a single unit, otherwise the intermediate levers, which you can see right here, kind of slide out of position and then you will have to do the rebuild of the Valvetronic assembly. So this is a very common mistake. People don't secure the intermediate levers or the intake camshaft and they start taking out assembly and it just kind of flies apart. Unfortunately, the geometry is such that the retainer springs press against the intermediate levers and they press them onto the intake camshaft. So they're under tension and when you take it out, they just fly out of position. So uh, one way to secure them is to use the clips from the bigger timing kit. 
as I said before, this is the small timing kit, this is the cheaper one. If you get the bigger timing kit, uh, you will get special clips that you can put on the oil line and on the intermediate levers, and that's what prevents them from falling out. But if you don't have the full kit, you can also use zip ties. So I'm going to show you how to use zip ties. Here are my zip ties. As you can see, they're quite strong and long. So make sure that if you're doing this job with zip ties, you get the longer, more stout zip ties. That's because uh, it's kind of easier to route them around all of the components. First, give the zip tie a little bit of a bend on the tip. You have to route the zip tie between the roller and this bridge on the intermediate lever. So go in between like this. Don't go up here because that won't work very well. So go here and then go around the eccentric shaft and over the oil line and then make it hand tight. You don't have to go crazy, just make sure that it's tight. Take special attention on the cylinder number three. This is where the intermediate levers are most likely to slip out when you remove the Valvetronic assembly. That's just due to the position of the camshaft. Next, we have to secure the intake camshaft to the bracket. So first, we are going to remove this bolt on the Valvetronic position sensor. Make sure you don't drop the bolt inside the engine. And now we're going to use the bolt from the timing kit and we're gonna screw it in where the bolt for the sensor was. And uh, this should do. Next, we're going to reinstall one of the Venus bolts. Now we're going to use two zip ties to bind them together. And this is how we connect the camshaft at the front and at the back. We basically do the same thing, but we go around the camshaft and the tip of the eccentric shaft. Now you can remove the spark plug cylinders and remove the banjo bolt on the oil line on the exhaust side. It is 11 millimeter socket. Be careful not to drop anything inside the engine. I recommend putting some uh, paper towels in the oil drain channels. Now you can just slide the oil line out of the way towards the back of the engine. And we are now ready to start removing the nuts. So uh, you have to remove four nuts here at the front and one at the back and the ones at the front, so this, 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 and this, and this line of nuts, so this four right here, and you don't have to remove the nuts here on the bearing cups for the eccentric shaft. Magnetic 10 millimeter socket would be quite a good idea. I don't have it, so I'll use the normal one, but once again, be very, very careful not to drop any of the nuts inside of the engine. You will also have to remove this uh, E8 Torx on the rail guide. And with all that work behind us, now it's time to finally pull the Valvetronic assembly. Now the best way to do it is to just grab the bolt at the front and the eccentric shaft at the back and just slowly wiggle out the Valtronic. Uh, it could be a bit stuck, so don't uh, push it, just do it slowly. And eventually it should release. Now I'm going to carefully pull it out and I'm gonna be careful not to scratch the bottom of the assembly on the stud bolts here. It's quite heavy, so be careful. And here it is. 
it's finally out. Few more notes while you have the Valvetronic assembly out of the engine. So the first thing you can see is this uh, plastic connector for the eccentric shaft sensor. This gets easily damaged while you're working on it. Maybe you just grab it wrong or it slips or something falls onto it. And these plastic clips on the side, they are very easy to break. The plastic is brittle after a while. So very easy to damage this sensor. And this is one of the most expensive sensors on the whole car. So definitely you don't want anything to go wrong here. Another thing, another tip is uh, to replace the gasket between the bracket and the DC motor. One of the signs of a bad gasket is of course oil pulling in this area right here. And uh, this could be due to leaky valve cover gasket, but uh, it's also this gasket here that can be a problem. This is how the gasket looks like. So it's just sandwiched between the plate and the motor. And the way to replace it is to just remove the two nuts on the servo motor. You can uh, take it out, replace the gasket and just uh, put it back and torque back the nuts to 10 newton meters and you should be ready to go. And here we have the remaining two spark plug cylinders. Here are the O-rings I was talking about. So very good idea to replace them if they're still original or if they are more than a couple of years old. And here you can see the rocker arms and the hydraulic lifters underneath. So this is the component that can easily slip when you are reassembling the Valvetronic assembly back onto the cylinder head. So what happens is when you try to fit it, this gets uh, displaced like this. And of course that will not work. So before you reinstall the Valvetronic assembly, always make sure that everything is uh, in its correct position. And this way you're giving yourself the best chance of doing this right the first time. And here is the Valvetronic assembly ready to be put back into the engine. Now this is a different assembly. So this is the original assembly. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm swapping the whole Valvetronic assembly from this engine to my original engine. And that's because I'm testing out some issues on the rough running cylinder number four. And I just want to test out if the eccentric shaft is bad on my original engine. And I'm kind of hoping that the bracket from the newer engine is in better condition. So I'm going to test it out. If I don't see the rough running on the cylinder number four anymore, when I replace this bracket, then I know there's an issue on uh, this Valvetronic assembly from my engine. So anyway, you can see that uh, this assembly has a 3D printed parts on it. So instead of using zip ties, I'm now using these 3D printed clips. They basically work the same as the zip ties. They clip onto the bridge on the intermediate levers and onto the oil line. So this is what's preventing the intermediate levers from sliding out of position. And also here at the front, I have this 3D printed uh, bracket that fits onto the camshaft and everything is secured with the bolt. So uh, if you would be interested in purchasing this uh, 3D printed kit for this, uh, let me know down in the comment. And uh, if enough people will be interested, maybe I'll put it up uh, for sale on my website. So anyway, now it's time to put the bracket back in. Now I've cleaned the surfaces. So before you install everything, Make sure that all the surfaces are nice and clean. You should have no debris here or any particles on the running surfaces, especially on the camshaft. This is very important. So clean everything and then put a little bit of oil on it. Same goes for the cylinder head. So clean everything up. Make sure that there's no debris or old oil on the surfaces. You can also inspect and see if there's any damage here. Now you can 
probably see that I've put a little bit of fresh oil already on the running surfaces. So now it's time to put the assembly back onto the cylinder head. So I'm going to start by holding this assembly with one hand. That's so I can uh, get it underneath here, underneath the cables. Now I'm going to switch to both hands. And now I'm going to align the holes with the stud bolts. If you just uh, look through the holes, you will be able to see the stud bolts right through there. And uh, you should be able to match the position perfectly and then just drop it in. Make sure that everything fits nicely. Give it a little push. Make sure that it fits nicely onto the spark plug cylinders. Okay, the assembly is back in. Now we can uh, start putting back the nuts. And now I'm going to just make them hand tight and I'm gonna go from center line towards the outside of the bracket. Don't forget to tighten up the nut at the back. This is uh, the one that people usually just forget about. So before you remove the zip ties, it's very important to use a light and uh, check that all of the rocker arms are aligned correctly. So none of them uh, slipped out of position. This is very important. And uh, if you don't do that, you will find out later that something is wrong, something is rattling, and then you'll have to go through all this procedure one more time. And now I'm going to torque all the nuts to 10 Newton meters. With all the bolts torqued, it's time to remove the intermediate lever clips. Now, if you're using zip ties, just uh, cut the zip ties and remove them. Now I'm going to remove this bolt here and remove this and put back the sensor bolt and I'm going to torque it to 10 Newton meters. Now I'm going to slide back the oil line and I'm going to put back the banjo bolt. Again, I'm going to tighten it down to 10 Newton meters. Now we have to put back the spring for the eccentric shaft. Again, I'm going to use universal joint and the long socket, this is five millimeters. So I'm just going to hook the spring and I'm going to pry it like this onto the bearing on the eccentric shaft. Another tip for the N42 and N46 engines is to clean out this oil line. Now, the way to do it is uh, to remove this banjo bolt here take out the line and then just spray the brake cleaner inside. You should see tiny spray nozzles all along the line. And uh, if the brake cleaner comes out evenly from all of the holes, then the line is clean. But what often happens is that the nozzles at the back get clogged due to poor oil maintenance and they stop spraying oil onto the valvetronic components. And this is, uh, in my opinion, the most uh, common cause of premature valvetronic wear. When the nozzles get clogged, there's no oil spray onto these components here, especially on the cylinder number four. And uh, this degrades the performance of the valvetronic system during idle. And yeah, definitely uh, clean it out. I'm going to do a video on how to clean those lines, so uh, check the description down below or subscribe to the channel and get notified when the video comes up. Once you've put back all the nuts and bolts and uh, torque them down, it's time to remove the rags from the oil channel. Don't leave that there or else you can say goodbye to your engine. And now we can put back the Vanos units. Again, make sure that you don't switch exhaust and intake side, they are different. And also make sure that uh, the surfaces are nice and clean because this is what actually seals the oil for the Vanos unit. 
Same goes for the surface on the camshaft. So the inside of this surface has to be nice and clean. I'm going to put in the intake Venus unit first. So make sure that the chain is nice and tight. And it should just slide in like this. And the same for the exhaust unit. So the Venus units are back in. They can be a bit fiddly to get it in, but you should take your time and you should be good to go. Time to put back the new Venus bolts. Now again, the bolts are stretched to yield, so that means they are one time use only. Make sure you replace them, otherwise you will run into some issues. And uh, I'm gonna put the part numbers down below in the description. Use a 16 millimeter socket and just uh, make them hand tight. Make sure that the Venus unit sits nicely onto the camshaft. And then just back off quarter of a turn. This makes the Venus units able to rotate slightly during the correct tightening procedure. Now I'm going to put back the torque bolt on the chain guide and I'm going to torque it to 10 newton meters. And with that, we are now ready to do the timing. So we first have to insert the intake camshaft locking tools. So if everything went well, you should be able to insert this locking tool. Well, in my case, uh, you can see that the camshaft is slightly rotated towards uh, this side of the engine. So what I will have to do is to rotate it counterclockwise for a couple of degrees. To do that, I can use a tool provided in the timing kit. So here is a special attachment that uh, fits onto the back of the camshaft and then you can use 13 millimeter spanner to rotate the camshaft. Okay, so I have this slotted in. Now I'm going to rotate the camshaft just a little bit. Now I'm going to try and install the locking tool once again. And it's perfect now. So you have to make sure that everything fits nicely and that this locking tool is nicely flush with the cylinder head so there's no gap between the cylinder head and the locking tool. Once you have this, you can go ahead and install the locking screw here. Make it nice and tight, but you don't have to go crazy. And this should be enough. Now we have to insert the exhaust camshaft locking tool. And this time we can rotate the camshaft by just inserting the tip of the tool and then pressing against the tool and rotating the camshaft. It's inserted, but now we have to secure it with the provided bolts. You can press down the tool and then tighten up the bolt. And finally, we have to install this uh, bolt that is provided with the kit. So just screw it down as far as you can. The back locking tools are now installed. Again, make sure that the rounded parts of the flats at the back are oriented towards the top. Now we can install the front locking tools for the timing gears. And this will be the large bracket. As you can see, we have two pins on each side and we also have two holes on the front of the impulse sending gears and we have to match those. So one pin goes in the exhaust and the other into the intake. And now that we have the front locking tool in, we have to make sure 
that the locking tool is flush with the cylinder head. So as you can see, it's just slightly protruding to the right side. So I'm gonna put it a bit more to the left. Now there's a little bit more. Let's see what's going on on the other side. So this looks like it's the same on both sides. So now I'm going to use the provided bolts and I'm going to secure the front locking tool to the cylinder head. I'm going to make sure that they are torqued down to about eight Newton meters. We don't want this front locking tool to move. Now it's time to install the dreaded locking pin for the flywheel. And this is uh, the tool right here. So this has to slide into the cylinder block and into the flywheel where the hole is. And this is what determines the correct position for the crankshaft. Now, if you started to do this job when the engine was in top dead center position, then you should be really, really close to the ideal position for inserting this locking pin. If you had some sort of issue with timing, maybe jump chain or something like that, then uh, this position could be farther from the ideal position. So we have to insert this pin from underneath, but luckily I have an engine here on the engine stand, so I can show you where this uh, location is. So you will have to lift the left side of the car up and get underneath and insert this locking pin. This is a very, very, uh, well, uh, fiddly job and it takes about 15 minutes if you're doing it the first time. So let me show you where the hole is. So the hole is right here underneath this cradle for the block. So right there in the corner is the hole where we have to insert this pin. And so when you first start, you have to go in like this with the tip and just try and feel where the hole is like this in this position and then push the pin backwards so it is straightened and then you should be able to wiggle it into the hole when the pin is far enough it will start engaging with the flywheel and there is a hole on the flywheel where this pin has to go through and once that is done you should have the crankshaft locked sadly i don't have the flywheel for this engine so i can't show you on the engine stand First, always start with a decent amount of WD-40 or some kind of uh, grease. So you clear out the debris and the dirt because as you can imagine, this gets uh, full of dirt and then you are not able to insert this locking pin. Okay, now I'm going to leave the car and show you how it's done on the actual car. So the first thing I had to do was to remove the splash cover underneath the engine. This is uh, the plastic cover that it's easily removed and that's because we will need to put a socket there up to the crank bolt. So we are able to rotate the crank from underneath with one hand while we try to insert the pin with the other. So this is the first step. 22 millimeter socket, some extensions, and then a bar to this level so you can hold it with one hand. And the pin we will have to insert here. So this is the engine mount and the control arm and the bushing. So you can reach from here or from underneath behind the transmission or the reinforcement plate over here. So if you go with your right hand, you can just about reach the location of the hole. So the hole is located beneath right there. So first I'm going to spray it with a little bit of WD-40. 
So we go in with the tip of the pin and try to feel the start of the hole. And then we have to try and wiggle the pin into the hole. So the first step is to just get it into the block and then we'll try to find the hole in the flywheel. Okay, I think I found the hole. Yeah, I think, I think the pin is in the hole now. But now we will have to find the hole in the flywheel. Okay, so I finally managed to insert the pin. It took me like five minutes, but that's because I've done it a couple of times before. If you're doing this for the first time, just expect for this to take like 15 or 20 minutes. You could be convinced that there's no hole in your flywheel, uh, but it definitely is. So just, uh, you know, Keep calm and keep trying until you get it right. So this is how it looks like when the pin engages with the flywheel. Okay, so it's right in there. So if I try to rotate the crankshaft with my other hand, it won't rotate. So this is a sign that the crankshaft is in fact locked. Now, the easiest way for me to do this was to use my left hand. So I was facing towards the front of the car and I used my left hand to go in from this angle. And I used my right arm to rotate the crankshaft and I've put the finger on my left hand on the top of the pin and I could actually feel when the hole tried to engage with the pin when I was rotating. So uh, I would say that this is kind of the easiest way to do it. So maybe you can give it a try. Now, another thing I have to mention is that uh, the automatic and manual gearboxes have different flywheels and uh, the automatic gearboxes have a larger hole right next to the smaller hole for the locking pin. So you might uh, engage with the wrong hole it's going to be a bigger hole, which means that you will still be able to rotate the crankshaft quite a lot. But when the pin is inserted correctly, you should not be able to rotate the crankshaft at all. Like it's really tight. So keep that in mind. With the pin engaged with the flywheel and the crankshaft locked, we can lower the car and continue the timing procedure. Now I'm going to remove the chain tensioner and install the pre-tensioning tool from the timing kit. The pre-tensioning tool screws in place of the original chain tensioner. And then you have this central bolt that you have to pre-tension to 0.6 Newton meters. But the problem is that it's kind of hard to get such a small value torque wrench back there. You can see there's not a lot of space there, so it's kind of hard to get there. So I've decided to make my own little 3D printed torque wrench. I used an online design for torque wrenches and I adapted it to fit my purpose. I'm going to put the STL files down below in the description. You can download it and uh, 3D print it yourself, but you will still have to calibrate it to 0.6 Newton meters. And that's because each material has different properties and uh, it may vary a little bit based on the material you choose to print it in. So this is uh, custom designed and it fits nicely onto the end of this center shaft and then you can easily torque it down to 0.6 Newton meters. So this pre-tensioning tool has to be screwed all the way to the engine block. Just make it hand tight and then you have to tighten down the central pre-tensioning bolt and now I'm going to use this little 3D printed torquing tool. And now I'm going to torque it down. 
until I hear it click. Okay, now we have to torque the Venus bolts to 20 Newton meters and we start with the exhaust side. And then we have to rotate the Venus bolt 180 degrees. The easiest way to do this is to use this standard angle gauge. If you don't have an angle gauge, you can mark your 180 degrees on the bolt and then just uh, do a visual 180 degrees turn. Set it to zero degrees and first do 90 degrees. And then do another 90. Okay, the exhaust side is done. Now we're gonna do the same on the intake side. The Venus bolts are bolted down. Now it's time to remove the chain tensioning tool and install the original chain tensioner. Also make sure that you have the latest revision of the chain tensioner. If your chain tensioner is still original, just replace it. Once the chain tensioner is all the way in, we have to torque it down to 65 Newton meters. Now we can remove the locking tools at the front and at the back and also remove the locking pin from the flywheel. Don't pull the pin all the way out, just unlock the flywheel. And that's because we're going to do a test and we need to rotate the crankshaft to do that and then reinsert the locking pin. So just wiggle it out. Flywheel is now unlocked, but the pin is still inserted into the engine block. Now we have to confirm that we've done the timing correctly. And to do that, we have to rotate the crankshaft for two turns until the exhaust and intake camshafts get back into their original location. And then we'll have to insert the back locking tool. Okay, now we remove the tool. Now that we have the engine rotated two times and back in the initial position, we have to go back underneath the car and reinsert the locking pin. Okay, it's locked. With the engine in top dead center, once again, we go and insert the back locking tools first. And let's see. Yeah, they fit perfectly, so this intake camshaft should be timed correctly. There should be no deflection on the side. Now let's do the same for the exhaust side. Again, the locking tool fits perfectly onto the cylinder head. There should be no gap here. And now we insert the front locking tool. And let's check the sides. It's pretty much flush with the cylinder head. So this means that we've done the timing correctly. And finally, we have to remove the locking pin from underneath and we're basically done. We just have to put back the valve cover and everything that's attached to that. And uh, we should be able to start the engine. I have a couple of videos on how to reinstall the valve cover, so I'm not going to do that here in this video. So I'm just going to skip ahead. If you are interested in how to do that correctly, just uh, check the link down below or up in the card. The valve cover is back on. If you do that, just a quick note, the two bolts at the top, this one and this one, have different length than these standard bolts. And also these two here have different length, so don't switch them around or else you will not be able to tighten down all of the bolts. They are slightly longer. So just make sure. You can also check my other video on the valve cover and everything is explained there. Now let's start the engine and see what happens.
I went on a short test drive and now I'm back in my car and I have my laptop connected via OBD cable and I have my IMPA running. So now we're going to check the timing in IMPA. So I'm going to go to E46 chassis, select engine and then I'm going to go to N42 which is my engine and then I'm going to scan for errors and no errors here so that's good now let's go to status so status and let's check analog values 4 and as you can see we have the adaptation for the intake camshaft and it is uh, 119.5 which is pretty close to perfect which is 120 so the intake camshaft seems to be in good order and also on the exhaust we have 54.9 which is pretty close to 55 which is ideal position for the exhaust so we've verified that we've done the timing correctly okay and that brings us to the end of the video the engine runs smoothly so no issues there if you have any more questions put them down in the comments i'll try to answer them and uh, thanks for watching consider subscribing keep zen and continue the art of bmw maintenance <laughs>